Press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update from Sebastian Fitness Solutions. In today's episode, I'm going to talk about the lats, the latissimus dorsi, the, those wing muscles that everyone wants, the wee taper. And I'm going to be talking about that and associated muscles along with it. So without any further ado, let's get straight into it. So now in this video, which is part one of my muscle masterclass on back, I'm going to be discussing mostly the latissimus dorsi muscle, the lats, and also the teres major muscle. Now, talking about the lats first, this is a picture of the lat muscle and its anatomy. Now, one of the reasons why we're looking into this is because in order to learn how to train a muscle optimally, you first need to understand the muscle, understand what the muscle does, and only then can we deduce what is the best way to go about training that muscle. So, going into the lats, as you can see, it's oh, it, the lat muscle encompasses so much area on the back. It's such a large muscle. In fact, a fun fact here is that uh, the latissimus dorsi name itself, if you break it down, latissimus means the broadest in Latin and dorsi means uh, back. So the latissimus dorsi name literally means the broadest muscle of the back. So yeah, uh, talking about the muscle itself, it has numerous origin points all across the back region. Talking about the origin of the lats, some of the fibers originate at the iliac crest, right over here. A lot of the fibers actually originate on the vertebral column, all the way across this entire area, from the 7th thoracic vertebrae to the 12th thoracic vertebrae, all 5 of the lumbar vertebrae, and also some vertebrae of the sacrum. So that's a large area from where they originate. Some of the fibers also originate at the inferior angle at the bottom of the scapula. And finally, some of the fibers also originate from the last 3 or 4 ribs, um, via what's called as the uh, thoracolumbar fascia. That's all I'm going to get into with that. There's <laughs> no need for going anymore. Um, these are the multiple origin points of the lat. So all of the lat fibers actually originate from these multiple areas and they all, uh, you know, bundle up together and, and go and join into one single insertion point, which is the underside of the humerus, commonly known as the bicipital groove of the humerus. So all of the fibers of the lats, which originate in these different locations, all tie them together and go and insert into this particular point. So what exactly do these various lat fibers that originate across all these different points and insert into the humerus, what exactly does it allow the lat to do? Well, a muscle, basically all it does is it brings its origin and insertion points closer together during contraction and further apart during elongation. So any movement that involves uh, this uh, this basically involves this, we involve that particular muscle in that movement. So with the lats specifically, what all of the lats do, the lats actually perform four functions. Namely, shoulder extension in which you bring the humerus, the upper arm bone, back to uh, take it behind, behind the body. Uh, you've, got, uh, you've got shoulder adduction which is bringing the humerus down and in towards the spine. You've got uh, transverse extension which is bringing the humerus back to the body while the humerus is parallel to the ground, horizontal basically. And um, finally you've got internal shoulder rotation. Now among these four uh, functions, Internal rotation and external, uh, external uh, transverse extension, the lat is not a very significant contributor to that. It does get involved, but not so much. Internal rotation is actually a function that's performed by multiple muscle groups, including the pectoralis major, including uh, the ant anterior uh, delts, including the subscapularis, which is a part of the uh, rotator cuff. So all these muscles are actually a little bit more uh, involved in internal rotation as opposed to the lats. The lats not nearly as significant in terms of for internal rotation. And transverse extension is a function that is actually performed by the rear delts primarily and the lat is actually assisting it. For lats, we consider two specific functions, namely shoulder extension and shoulder adduction. And every form of training that any exercise that is target, meant to target the lats usually uh, performs either one of these two functions and if you think about it, it makes perfect sense think about all the lat exercises you're familiar with any form of horizontal rowing such as bent over rows one arm rows cable rows all of that is basically nothing more than shoulder extension and any form of vertical rowing such as pull-ups pull downs reverse grip pull downs all of that is actually part of shoulder adduction so that now you now you understand how those exercises are different and how they train the lats. They both, uh, any horizontal pulling movement will work the lats as per their shoulder extension function and any form of vertical pulling movement will work the lats in the form of shoulder adduction. 
Now comes the tricky. Now comes the interesting part. So you remember I just mentioned that uh, a, a muscle, all it does, uh, what it does is basically pull when it contracts. It pulls its original insertion points together in line of the fibers or, uh, or the orientation of the fibers. Correct. Now let's evaluate the orientation of the lat fibers. If you look closely at the lat fibers, right at the top over here, between at the T7, T8, and the initial uh, initial insertions of the insertion points of the lats uh, on the thoracic spine, uh, you'll see that most many of the fibers are running uh, almost horizontal, around perpendicular to the vertebral column. Just a few more fibers right over here, but for the most part, majority of the lat fibers actually run at a downward angle from the humerus all the way down to the various insertion points, around about a 70 degree angle, somewhat. Um, yeah, so that's that's the angle. Most of them are downward. They're very a very small portion that is horizontal or almost horizontal, and then most of it is uh, running downward. Now, when you evaluate those movements, talk about shoulder extension. Shoulder extension is nothing more than bringing the humerus back, right? So when you do that, there is going to be a certain degree of to which the humerus is actually going to be brought closer to the spine. And most likely, it is these fibers, the ones that are almost horizontal, that get maximum tension on that. But for the most part, the majority of the lat muscle, which is right over here at an angle, is not getting nearly as much stimulated. I mean, it will, of course, a muscle contracts and so on. But the movement is not in line of maximum muscle, number of muscle fibers. Also, when you pull the humerus back, you are going to make, get it relatively closer to the to the spine, but it's not the movement is not truly bringing the humerus from the maximum elongation to the spine to a closest point of the spine, which is a maximum contraction of the lat. So when you talk about a shoulder extension movement, yes, it does involve the lats, but not to as significant a degree, or not completely in line with the muscle fibers, and not through taking it through its entire range of motion. So any movement that is a horizontal row is not really the the optimal lat exercise if you're looking at uh, both of these type of movements as a horizontal and vertical row which will actually allow you to take the humerus from a uh, elongated position and bring it down in towards the spine which is exactly how the fibers are oriented and which is what will allow maximum contraction of the muscle which movement allows it any form of vertical rowing so between the two vertical rows target the lats a lot lot more compared to horizontal rows this should not be mistaken as, okay, you know what, so horizontal rows should not be done. There are plenty of reasons to do horizontal rows, whether it's developing other muscles that are involved more actively in that. The rear delts, such as the rhomboids, such as the mid traps, all of these do get significantly taxed with, the, uh, with, the horizontal, with horizontal rows and in general to improve horizontal pulling strength. So there are many, plenty of reasons to include horizontal rowing movement. However, just for the sake of clarification, Horizontal rows are not really the best way to train a lat. The best way to train a lat would be through the shoulder adduction function, which involves you to bring the humerus closer towards the spine in orientation of the muscle fibers, right? So I hope that is clear. But now I'm going to bring up another interesting point. So now that we know that humerus, the horizontal, between horizontal and vertical rows, the vertical rows work lats better. However, let's evaluate the classic way most people do our vertical rows. We talk about a pull up or a pull down. The hands are actually aligned inward. The resistance is, this is where the muscle is. The resistance is coming here. And when you pull the humerus, even though you're pulling it closer to the spine, the resistance is actually moving in this direction, opposite, right? You're pulling the stack straight down. Even if you pull a single handed cable or even if you pull or if you use a bar, which most people do, the resistance is pulled this way in a way that the resistance actually comes in this angle. It is not aligned with the actual direction of the, or the orientation of the lat fibers, which is in this direction. So how do we do that? Um, so one thing for sure is that, by the way, is that it's because it's not happening, whatever we are doing with, the, even though you're performing the optimal fun uh, function for um, the, for the lats, the tension, the absolute tension that we are handling uh, when it comes to a lat pull down or a pull up is not uh, maximally placed on the on the lats. It's not placed along the orientation of the muscle fibers. So how do we do that? We do it by creating a simple modification of the typical lat pull down that we do. And I would, before I continue, I would like to give credit to the person who from whom I got this idea. 
Uh, I have never interacted with him personally, but I have read an article from him, and his reasonings are absolutely sound. And these are the very reasonings I'm going to be repeating in this video. So I want to give a quick um, shout out and uh, credit to him. And his name is Mr. Doug Brignoli. I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. If I'm not, I really apologize. But uh, he has written a beautiful article on the best lat movement or the best lat exercise, and he has explained exactly why, and I'll be doing that as well. So what he suggests, rightly so, by the way, is that. In order for the resistance or in order for tension to be maximally placed on the lat along the orientation of its muscle fibers, the resistance should come in an opposing angle to where the lats are going to contract. So if the lats are contracting this way, the resistance should be coming from an angle, not from straight above, like in the traditional lat pull down or a pull up. It should be coming from an angle right over here, as you can see. Uh, I hope you can see this arm over here. So if the resistance were to come at this angle, then if the muscle fibers contract and pull the humerus towards the spine, it would be in line of maximum number of muscle fibers of the lat. So, how about modifying the lat pull down exercise to allow us to do that? And that is exactly what Doug, Doug suggests. He suggests that we do an exercise which he, uh, which he calls as pull-ins. Basically, instead of pulling the resistance from right above you in a traditional lat pull down machine, you set a cable at an angle of anywhere between 45 to 60 degrees and you pull the cable from, from out, outside to inward. Now, I'm actually gonna link, I'm gonna put a preview of, a, of myself doing that exercise. And those of you who watched my previous video, the one before this, and may have wondered what exercise that was, this is the further up, this is explaining exactly what it is. So now you know how, why I'm doing that exercise. And if you wanna check out how to do it, just watch my video and you'll get to know how it's done. I'll link it in the description as well. But this is the reasoning behind it. So if you think about it, it's a simple modification made to a classic exercise that we're all familiar with, but it'll actually allow the resistance that we're pulling and the line of movement to match the orientation of the muscle fibers, thereby allowing maximum tension on the lats. Now, does this mean that the way we are doing a, a traditional lat pull down is wrong? Absolutely not. But this actually maximizes the efficiency with which you can actually train your lats across shoulder abduction purely. Abduction purely. However, I have a few critiques with this. First is that the fact that when you train any form of short, uh, shoulder adduction, you end up doing what's called a scapular depression, which is the function of the trope trope lower trapezius. And if you're doing enough exercises in the shoulder addu adduction, you do not need to specifically train your uh, lower trapezius because it gets all the work it needs through those exercises. However, if you do it this way, the degree of shoulder of scapular depression is not that much. And that is why your lower traps will actually not get enough stimulus. So if you are, you can't, and another reason is of course that in general to improve vertical pulling, to improve pull-ups, increase vertical pull-up strength, you need to do some of the other form of um, pull-up or pull-down. So I wouldn't say that this exercise completely replaces a, a, a traditional pull-up. I would say that it is an added accessory, especially maybe it's something that somebody can consider if they have lagging lats, so they want to give a little more attention to the lats specifically. I wouldn't say that this will entirely replace a traditional pull-up or a pull-down. Um, and if you are thinking of something like that, then you'll have to incorporate some of the other movement for the lower traps as well. So instead, I would say stick to your regular pull-ups and uh, if possible, add on this if you want some more attention on your lats. This is definitely by far the most efficient exercise anatomically and, uh, and uh, biomechanically speaking, it would be the most exercise, efficient exercise for the lats specifically. It does not mean that horizontal rowing is not required, it is. It does not mean that vertical pull-ups, uh, vertical pulls are not required, it is. But speaking specifically and strictly for the lats itself, this would be the most efficient exercise to train it. So I hope that is very clear and I hope that there's no wrong message that's been sent across with this uh, information. So that's all there is for lats. Now let's look into another muscle that actually comes along with lats. So I thought I'd cover it in with this video, in this video itself. And that is the teres major muscle. Uh, I hope you guys can see this. I'll zoom in as much as I can. I hope this is visible. Yeah, so the teres major muscle, it, its origin is at the inferior angle of the scapula. Remember, it's also one of the origin points of the lats. And the insertion point is the same insertion point of the lat and that is the bicipital groove of the humerus. So, as you probably have guessed, it pretty much does all, all, almost all the, all the functions that the lat performs, which is whether it's uh, shoulder extension, whether it's shoulder adduction, whether it's internal rotation, it does the same. And naturally, it gets all the attention it needs through lat exercises. When you perform those functions, when you perform shoulder extension and shoulder adduction while training lats, you will inevitably train your teres major to, to whatever degree it needs to be trained. 
So it's nothing to worry about and I'm sure nobody of you, none of you even thought about it but just to put it in there, this is also a muscle of the lat, of the back and uh, comes along with the lat so I thought of adding it into this video. So that's about it guys, that concludes our muscle masterclass on the lats. I really hope this was informative for you. Just as a conclusion, uh, lats perform Best way to train lats is across the shoulder extension and shoulder adduction functions, horizontal and vertical rows, out of which horizontal rows are not really the most effective for the lats. However, they are required and you'll understand this further why so as I talk about the other muscles of the back in further muscle muscle class videos. Um, better way would be to train it with vertical pulls, sh shoulder adduction. However, the traditional way that we do it, not really the most optimum in line of uh, lat fibers. So, the, an alternate form or a modification of, those, of that exercise called as a pull-ins. Uh, is, would, is what I would suggest for getting maximum tension of the lats. However, judging from the perspective of those exercises standalone, I would always say that the traditional vertical pull, such as a pull, pull up or a pull down, would be ideally superior uh, compared to the other one in general. But for the lats specifically, a pull in would, would, would be the superior one. So, whether or not you should do it would depend upon how much tension you want to focus on the lats, whether you want to add some more work for it. If anything, you could add it as a supplement, but not really as a replacement. So I hope that is clear and we quickly dabbed into the teres major muscle as well but you don't really need to worry about that as you know it gets all the attention it needs. So I hope this video was informative and if it was please uh, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and uh, if you have any questions whatsoever please don't hesitate to post them below in the comments I will definitely get to them. I answer all my comments all the questions I've received without fail so whatever it is post it below and I will definitely get to it. So if you guys like the information in this video and the other videos that I put out as well as and you would like me to you like the work that I'm doing and you would like me to continue doing so uh, please help me out by liking sharing the video and just spreading the word of the channel in general. I can use all the help I can get as it's visible as it's pretty evident and uh, I would really appreciate any support that I can get. I need your help, so now's the time guys, help me out. So uh, that's about it, I hope this video is informative and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out. Hey, thank you for watching that video. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And finally, to watch another video, click right over here.